Hi and welcome to today's live chapter reading of Hacker by Nadine Travers, courtesy of Etsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1. Hacker. It's been almost six months. Six months of looking, of trying to find her without success. My friend Renegade approaches me with a serious look on his face. Hey man, what's up? he asks. I study him for a moment. Where his hair is black, mind is blonde. We're almost opposite in those way. My friend is taller than me, but more slender. I may love computers, but that doesn't mean I ignore the gym. Renegade, I ask, shouldn't you be with your soon-to-be wife? He takes a sip of his beer. My fiancé is worried about you, and she asked me to talk to you. You know, there's nothing you can do. This is something I need to deal with on my own. Hacker, we're here for you, all of us. We know it's been almost six months, and we also know you think about her every day. I want to deny it, but they know me well. I can't lie to them. My phone trills and I grab it, recognising at the screen, glancing at the screen before answering it. I recognise the number, and I'm surprised she hasn't used a burner phone. Hacker, I need your help. Meet me at... Her voice is cut off abruptly, and the line goes dead. My palms are already sweaty and fear knots in my belly. What the fuck, Renegade said. I turned to my friend. It's her. But why now? What's going on? I need my stuff. I walked towards the house as Chief, Hunter, Tank, Renegade, Sensei, Ghost, Doc and even the Shadow stop what they're doing to watch me. We've got your back. Whatever you need, just let us know. Help yourself to whatever you need in the basement. You know where everything is, Renegade tells me. I grimace, but I mean to smile. I don't have time to talk, so I rush inside. Something isn't right. After all this time, why has she finally contacted me? I open the computer and start my location program. I need to find her, and fast. Maybe I can pinpoint her phone, and I hack into a provider and run a trace on her cell service. Damn it, she's fucking downtown and close to HQ. I transfer her location to my phone. Hey brother, I'm coming with you. The voice stops me and I look at Sensei. I don't have time to argue or to ask why. We exit the back of the building and jump into my SUV. Sensei slips into the driver's seat and I let him because I need to keep focused on the signal. He'll get me to her. Go, oh, Sensei, drive as fast as you want, as crazy as you want. This is one time it won't freak me out. He laughs and I cross my fingers that we'll get there on time. I'm lucky I always have my laptop with me, so I'm able to trace her movements downtown. It's like she can feel me getting closer. Faster, Sensei. The signal is moving in the opposite direction now, I order him. We left Renegade's place 30 minutes ago. The GPS is leading me to downtown Montreal, more specifically the old port. Hey man, I'm doing my best here. It's not my fault your woman turned up here when we were in Laval, he says. I don't understand. My focus is on that dot, hoping she's the one that's moving and not some kind of animal that's grabbed her GPS device. She's at the Science Museum. Sensei grilled at me. I can't park out front, so I'll have to drop you off. You better keep your channel open. As soon as I park your baby, I'm going to run in your direction. It's not my fault. She probably picked this place because it's usually guarded. She'll be able to hide inside. When I receive a text, I gasp. Oh no. What is it, Sensei inquires. She sent me a text message. She's with a group of tourists and needs an extraction. How does she know how to use that language? Sensei pulls around and stops my SUV near the side of the building. He turns to look at me. What's next? If she wants to be extracted, it means she's in danger. Don't park the SUV. Wait for us here. I climb out and take the tracker with me, since I have to be able to keep up with her movements. Jogging towards the entrance, I look over my shoulder to make sure I'm not being followed to the door. The young lady at the ticket window gives me a smile. How many, sir? I study the woman behind the glass. Only one. I'm here to meet someone. Are you part of a group? She asks. I consider her and wonder what I should say. How do I answer the woman's question? I already said I only needed one. 
My phone buzzes with another text message. Say you're with the French Society. I grin. Yes, I'm with the French Society. She defers to her sheets. Yes, sir, I can see that some are missing. You'll be able to find them easily. They have a big French flag. I nod and pay her for the ticket. I follow the line into the building, searching for any sign of the French flag. I'm inside. Where are you? I keep walking. I need to find her. I need to find Marie. I see you. Keep walking. I'm close to the women's bathroom in front of you. I raise my eyes. And she's there. Right there. Not a picture. Not a video to remind me how she looks. She's changed her hair colour. She smiles at me. But I don't smile back. I want to bite something. Bite her. No, I want to put that damn woman over my shoulder and slap her arse. That damn woman. Hacker, she calls. She's afraid of something and I can't tell what. Nobody else could make it out. But I know her well enough that I can hear the fear in her voice. I give her a kiss on her cheek. I guess you need to get out of here as fast as possible. You'll need to fill us in though. Sensei is waiting for us. I grab her elbow and we head towards the nearest exit. The tightness in my gut is telling me we need to leave. On the other side of the window, I see Sensei waiting. I push Marie to move her faster. Stop right there. I turn and she freezes on the spot. An officer behind us skibbles as though trying to figure out who we are. Finally, he gestures towards Marie. Then he says, we need to bring her back to the station. I signal to Sensei. He winks as he unlocks the passenger doors and starts the engine. You're not taking her anywhere, I say. Marie grabs my hand and gives it a hard squeeze. Her gesture means this is bad. But how bad? I have more questions and fewer answers. You can't dis disobey a direct order from the police. Anyone that didn't know anything about the uniform and protocol would have been easily fooled, but not me. Not us. This cop isn't real. I'd stake my life on it. I don't see a police officer. I continue to push Marie towards the SUV. She's compliant. She knows we need to get out of there and fast. What's this then? He shows me his badge, but I can tell it's fake. I'm not a hacker for nothing. If that was real, I'd listen. But as it's as fake as your uniform, you can fuck right off. I break into a run, pulling Marie along. We need to reach the safety of the SUV. With the fake cop drawing attention and the security cameras recording us, we need to get out of there now. Problems, my friend, Sensei says into my earpiece as we exit the building, and he's got a smirk on his face. I know the guy. He likes to stir up trouble. He'd provoke a snail. Fighting makes him happy. What do you think? I whisper to him. Get inside, Marie. Hurry, I yell. No, stop, she screeches at the cop as he bolts after us. I push Marie inside and climb in after her, taking the seat beside her. Go, Sensei, now. Sensei slams the SUV into drive and hits the gas. That wasn't the best place to do a pickup, but you know that. There are too many people around and these streets have a reduced speed limit. On top of that, all these lights and cameras show our faces, Sensei complains. I don't fucking care, Sensei. You wanted to come. This is your job. Get us back to HQ. I crawl into the front next to him, settling in the passenger seat. You stay back there, Marie, and get down. That fake cop just got in an SUV and they're following us. Sensei manoeuvres through the crowds best he can. We want to avoid the real cops and avoid getting arrested. Sensei glances over his shoulder at Marie. So, young lady, what kind of trouble are you in? She seems more than a little overwhelmed right now, so I intervene. Not now, Sensei. Eyes on the road. He takes a hint and focuses on driving. He's able to leave the old port of Montreal and head back to HQ, taking us right into the middle of downtown Montreal. Ah, fuck, there's still construction. With this mess, we'll have to detour, he says. I don't answer. My attention is only on Marie. She seems more fragile and vulnerable than she was six months ago. Fear pulls at her face, making her seem older than she is. What's happened in the last six months? I glance back to see if we're being followed. They're still back there. Yeah, something tell, tell me something I don't know. Sarcasm drips off Sensei. We're close to Sherbrooke Street. I can see the tower from the McGill College, hidden behind the Montreal Trust Building. 
Marie tries to sit up. Where are we going? Stay down, I say. We're headed to HQ. She studies me. You've lost weight. Really? That's the only thing you have to say to me? I don't know what else to say, and we've come to a halt at a red light. The SUV following us comes around the corner. The bad guys are catching up. Marie opens her mouth to speak, but I shake my head. Now isn't the time, I say. She clamps her mouth shut. I punch Sensei in the arm. They're on our tail, Sensei. Listen, I have to wait for the fucking light to turn green. This is downtown Montreal, for Christ's sake. I sigh. We're less than five minutes from HQ, but the traffic is heavy. Sensei, two of them are getting out of the car. Well, if we're stuck, they are too, but they can walk faster than we can move ahead on the street. But he pokes her head up, turns round and sees him. Her eyes widen. We have to go. They'll kill you both. Sensei looks from her to me. You got this? I glare at him. What do you think? I'm not leaving her. Her? Marie asks. I gesture to Sensei. You slow them down and I'll send back up as soon as I get her to safety. He nods, grabs his katana and climbs from the SUV. Take her. Go. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Tell the front desk to be ready for anything. I nod and climb into the driver's seat and check the mirrors. The others are still coming, but we're now moving. The light flashes for us to turn left. The two guys in the sidewalk start running towards Sensei. He removes his katana from his scabbard and waits for them to reach him. I look away, staring at the bumper in front of me. I know he's able to defend himself. He's crazy. He doesn't have a chance against them, Marie yells at me. You don't know him, Marie. That man is a martial arts machine. Fighting is his life. Don't worry, he's got a gun, but he prefers his katana. I turn at the single garage door that leads to the parking garage below headquarters. I flash my badge and the overhead door immediately opens. The other car is right behind me, and our tyres squeal as I floor the gas pedal, trying to get in before they can get to us. Once our rear bumper clears the entrance, I push the button to close the door and open the window. We're in danger, I yell through the window. They're following us. Cameras and mics are placed all over the tunnel. The boys will hear me. I don't know if the people chasing us got in behind us or not. We continue until the driveway opens into an underground lot, and I pull into a parking space. People are moving through the level, coming and going. The elevator opens for us. Sensei is outside, I tell the agents headed towards us. He needs backup. The leader glances at the others. You heard the agent. Get ready. At that, I grab Marie's arm and run inside the elevator. We don't want to be there when the bullets start flying. The door closes and we start the climb. HQ is on the top floor. A minute later, the door slide open and a line of agents surround the elevator with guns pointing at us. I raise my hands. Stop. It's me. Code. Humid. What is humid? Marie looks at me. I know it's a weird code. All the guns get put away. If Sensei was here, he'd say what fucking code is. One of the younger agents says out loud, and the rest of us starts to laugh. What's this all about, hacker? I sigh. I don't know where to start. Not here. To the office now. I put my hand behind Marie's back to show her, show her the way. She doesn't say anything and follows my instructions. We enter Chief's spacious office. He's sitting in his black leather chair behind his massive wooden desk. The desk is almost more intimidating than Chief. Talk, Chief bellows. Chief, this is Marie. He glances at her and then back at Marie. The Marie? I grimace. Yes, that one. She frowns at me and I can see the question on her face. Chief crosses his arms. Why bring her here? Her life is obviously in danger. We almost didn't escape. Marie takes a seat in one of the chairs in front of the chief's big desk. Chief continues. Renegade told me you received a call and that Sensei went with you. Where is he? He'll be here any minute. He bought us enough time for the traffic light to change so that we were able to enter the building. He pressed a button on his speakerphone. Martha, please verify that Sensei has arrived. If not, send up a back backup team to him. Yes, sir. She hangs up. Before I'm able to speak, the door opens. Anyone miss me? I grin. Only Sensei would do something like that and get away with it. He stops beside the chief's desk. You took your time, I say. 
since I last, nah, they didn't know when to quit. The backup team is heading there to clean up outside. Chief nods at him. Do we need renegade on speakerphone? No, I don't want any more people involved in this. I'm starting to believe it was a mistake to call Hacker for help, and I was desperate. But he answers the chief. You need to talk, because this organisation is now involved, whether you like it or not. She glares at me. Nice. Now she's angry. I only wanted you to help me. Even that was risky enough, but I can't change it now. She fidgets, playing with her fingers the way she does when she's worried. Well, young lady, you need to explain, and fast. They entered the perimeter, but they killed themselves before we were able to capture them and put them in a cell for interrogation. She closes her eyes. That's how this organisation works. No trace of their existence. Marie, we need to know what's going on. She looks at me and then the chief. I don't think I have a choice. No, you don't, young lady, chief says. Very well then, where do I start? At the beginning, I say, 